direct our attention to the board here. Here was their starting income, 23402 a month. Expenses is $16,229.71. And here was their starting debt prior to working with me. One point one almost $1.2 million in debt. And then this was their about cash flow. Give or take, it could be a lot less sometimes and, and more, it just depends. And we ended up, we, we got approved for a HELOC, you know, on their primary mortgage for 67,000 at 5.25%. And what I listed out right here are all the, the breakdowns of each debt. This is the debt balance, Right, they have 970,000 owed on the mortgage. This is a car, that's a car. Student loans, all the way down is student loans. He's a uh, MD, so a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of expense to you know become a doctor. So, and then here are the monthly payments on each one of the debts, and then here are the interest rates. All right, just want to lay that out for you. And then right here is the actual plan, the strategy that I laid out for them. And what, what I'm about to tell you is really gonna blow your mind of how awesome and how much traction they're making in progress. So the first move in every strategy that we lay out when we're doing velocity banking is figuring out that chunk, you know, once we've got our numbers in line, we know all our debts, we know where all the money's going, we got our debt tool, now we gotta figure out what the chunk is. So if you were to look at these debts right now, I'm gonna turn it to you guys, I'm gonna ask you, which debts would you pay off and ignore this chunk right here? I want you to like assume that we're gonna figure out the chunk. Looking at all his debts here, which debts would you pay off yourself, right? And then how much would your chunk be? What we did is we decided to chunk at car number one, car number two, right? And get an immediate cash flow increase of the 805 plus the 288. Now, it'd be cool, it's, you know, it's nice to want to chunk at the smaller debts, but you gotta factor in what this person is making per month, the potential cash flow, right? And the large HELOC. So the, the higher the numbers go, the more chunk we have to make for it to make sense when we're paying off debts, when we're uh, you know borrowing from one debt to pay another, we wanna make sure that what we're paying off is gonna give me a significant cash flow gain, but also a huge savings on the interest side so that whatever I pay over here is gonna offset because of the amount of interest I saved over here and here, all right? So it wouldn't make sense to tackle the mortgage that's too big of a, of a you know, of a debt to tackle, right? It's too big. Even though, if I was to throw 49, I would definitely save so many years off, I would shave probably like a year or two off his mortgage, probably more than that. A good 20, 30 plus months, give or take, right? Who knows? But would my cash flow increase? No. And I wouldn't tackle the student loans either because that's still a big, that's a big debt to tackle. And then if I was to add up these debts right here and you add the, the cash flow gains from it, it wouldn't equal this nor the interest savings. So we're gonna, our first chunk was about 49K, it was probably a little bit less, I believe, because by the time we actually chunked, right, they joined, they started working with me in February, we didn't get the HELOC till, I mean, no, they joined in January we didn't start working together, uh, uh, making the chunk till February, I believe, like middle of February. So by that time, you know, the debt was like a little bit lower. So about 49K or less, chunked, wiped it out. Cool. Now we got a cash flow gain. All right. Income for that month of February, as soon as 
we took this money out, right? We chunked on the day of one of these payments, I believe it was. That's one way of doing it. Or you can chunk on the day you get paid, okay? Or the day before. And the reason why you would do that is so that you replenish what you took out of your debt tool as well as cutting off the interest from even accruing on what you took out. And also you won't have a monthly payment on the debt tool itself. You won't have a payment. So a lot of people will wonder like, whoa, 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 if I take out this amount, then what's my monthly payment gonna be on the HELOC? There is no monthly payment because we're dumping all of his income right in there, right? So we don't even give the, the, the bank an opportunity for us to send us a bill. We won't even get one, right? I don't even, I don't get like a bill when I am doing velocity banking because the bill gets pushed out two months, three months, sometimes even as far as four months down the road, depends on how your credit union works. So it's pretty interesting, right? And then now for the month of February, boom, we've got expenses coming out, right? And notice how the expenses have dropped, okay? That's the balance. Next month, do it again. Income goes in, expenses come out. Remember, we're not pulling out 15K all at once, all right? We're pulling it out as we need it to pay bills on the day that those bills are due, right? Balance drops to 32. Income goes in, expenses come out. Same thing, now we're in May, all right? Each, each column is a month, all right? Coming in May, income goes in, expenses out. Here's the balance, okay? When you're making, I want to say, like 10000 or more a month, you have the opportunity to chunk before you actually zero out the line of credit. And what that's going to do is actually speed up the timeline even further. So rather than me telling this couple, hey, wait another month to actually zero out the line of credit, rather than wasting that time, when we factor in, here are the things we want to factor in. If we're going to chunk before we actually zero out the line of credit, okay, is we want to factor in the total amount of credit limit that we have. We want to factor in the income and the cash flow. So in this particular case, we have really good income, really good cash flow, right? We increased it a thousand bucks plus already, and we have a significant, like a nice big chunk of credit limit availability, nice space. So rather than me waiting to clear out that 16, I can go ahead and structure my next chunk it is a little bit less than the first one, but because I'm going faster, I'm doing it in the month of June, right? I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out the next few debts. And then in this chunk, we went ahead and wiped out all of these student loans. We went ahead and wiped those out free and clear, right? This was the strategy that I laid out for them. And here was Here's what would have been the results. Here are my words. What would have been the results? They would have paid $113,000 of debt off in five months. Five months. Oh my. And their cash flow would have gone up to nearly nine grand. Okay? So that, that's what I laid out for them. Okay? But can I tell you what actually happened? Because something happens when you start like binge watching on, on my channel, watching Velocity Banking. You start, you start looking at where every dollar goes. You start paying attention to your money. You start cutting back. You start saying, I don't need this and I don't need that and da 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 and na 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 na. Right? Well, let me tell you, this, this gentleman right here, not only did he really like, I mean, bring the home together. I mean, wife is. You know, on the calls, wife started getting involved. She started answering, asking hundreds of questions more than him. And I was like, yes, you know, getting the whole couple together. And um, so let me just let me just say a couple things, right? And I'm I'll, I'll write it out. 
Here's what they actually did. In February, right, so going back to February, what they actually did was they cut back on their expenses, right? Husband started looking at all his money. He was like, hey man, I don't need this and I don't need that. He managed to cut back $2,000 of expenses per month. Like, oh man. You know, I tell people that I always have cash flow problems, right? And I look at their income. Some, some people I work with, they're making 15 grand a month, 10 grand a month, 18 grand a month. Cash flow is like a thousand bucks. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right? Like, I, I don't care how many kids you got. Like, you need to work your cash flow. You need to work that money. You really need to, I don't care what state you live in, like you really need to not live according to what you make, right? Don't live according to what you make. Like if you really wanna speed up this concept, if you could live like, if you could live broke, that's this is what Grant Cardone says. He says live broke when you're in the process of creating your 10x life. Right, live broke. And what I did was for myself is I lived a 50% lifestyle, not 50% lifestyle in terms of like how I do things, more so 50% lifestyle on how I pay for things. Like I, I cut back on everything. I just, I only go on the necessities, the needs, okay? So he worked on that. They cut back 2,000 in expenses. Another thing they did was they redirected their money, okay? They redirected their 401ks. He had a 401k, wife's got 401k, he's got 403b, he's got, he's got tons of stuff, right? Almost a million in assets, and he just bah, 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 cut them off, right? That's all that money is dead money, sitting there dead, right? You're, you think you're getting the match, Right, with the 401k. You're like, yeah, you know, Denzel, I'm getting my 6% match, you know, because I put this and then that. But then if I was to break down the numbers, if I, if I really sat down with you and, and we printed out the whole terms and agreements of your 401k, which most people never do, and look at how many freaking fees are in there, okay, number one, and then number two, factoring tax, and inflation, that little match doesn't even cover your cost. So you're technically more money is going into the 401k, right? Because they're matching you what you put in, right? Companies matching you. But what actually happens is over the many years, as you put more and more money in, guess what? Your fees and costs get higher and higher. So what ends up happening is you think you're gonna end up with a million, two million dollars in that 401k, but you're only gonna have access to maybe two thirds of that. Cause a third of that is gonna to go towards taxes and fees and interest costs and da da da, right? And then the other 30% of that money is gonna to go towards what? Paying bills, paying debts, right? So this couple right here, they're in their uh, wife is 48, 49, and he's 50 and a half or it might be reversed, but at that age, you know, how, how long is it gonna take me to pay off $1.2 million, okay, and still try to, you know, invest, in, you know, money for the next nine years? Like, where, where, I don't see where the math makes sense for me right there. So, what he did was he's like, you know what, man, we're just gonna redirect that money. I'm gonna have that money work for me, not I work for it. Shouldn't be working for money. Money should be working for you. It's a simple tool, right? It's the most important tool, really, in your life to get all the things you wanna get. So he redirected money. Let's see what else this gentleman did. Oh, he also redirected his savings, right? The heck are you saving money for? It only makes sense to save money to invest, right? But if you're saving money to save for an emergency, where, where, you know, you're, you're asking to lose that money. You're asking for it. If you're saving money in an account that isn't earning any interest, and then you've got to, whatever money it does earn on interest, you have to pay taxes on it anyways. Remember, money that sits does nothing is useless. We might as well use savings, 
use redirection of money to wipe out all this debt and I'll make you money. I'll actually make you money. His income stays the same, but his cash flow continues to rise throughout the years now, today, right? Now, today, which is really going to uh, impact his results. Let's see what else this gentleman did. Oh, I just wrote that he listened. <laughs> this is important, you know, and this just goes to show that when you're seeking information, uh, when you are ready to become a student, the teacher will appear. He or she may not look like what you wanted or what you thought. So I'm going to put me on the, on the hot seat here. I'm only 23 years old. And here we have a couple that makes as many commas, as many thousands as my age. And he decided to humble himself and allow me to share and help him. He, he allowed a 23 year old to help him. Like, do you know how much, uh, uh, you know, the man pride you gotta like drop? Cause, cause even I have it, we all've got it. We've all got that, that pride. Like, uh, I'm good, man. I'm making a ton of money, you know? Life's good, da da da, you know? Paying my mortgages, right? Paying my bills on time. No, no, no. He, he and his family wants more. They want more. When you want more and you're ready to become a student, right, and, and surrender to what you think you know, right, and just like come in with a blank, blank, just come in blank, right? When we, when we conversate, man, it's, it's awesome when I'm able to talk to someone that has not been fed, you know, a contamination about money and then and these precepts and concepts about money. So when I approach someone that has just brand new to the concept, the results happen so much faster. And on the other hand, for people that are willing to just, hey, let me just drop all my barriers. Let me just drop it all and come into this thing blind and let's see what we can do. Do you guys agree with that? What actually occurred, did I write it down? I hope I did. Oh my God, please, Lord. He paid over hundred and forty five thousand dollars of debt in a five-month period okay so this was the layout he chunked in February and due to all this redirection of money and and focus on maximizing the velocity banking concept he ended up doing a chunk again I believe in like April or March so this 33 ended up coming right over here and then we're doing velocity banking doing velocity banking and let me tell you what we're working on now 